Okay. okay. <laughs> Um, so, as you can see, my name is Ines, I come from Portugal, I worked for five years in Portugal as an intensive care nurse, and then I worked in the UK as well for five years as another five years as an intensive care nurse. So my background was uh, basically intensive care nurse since I joined the tissue viability department, and it's been a great joy for the last six months, and this is me when we did last year the Pressure Ulcer Awareness Day. And this was, uh, I think, the highlight of these six months, to be able to talk to my colleagues and raise the awareness for pressure ulcer prevention and treatment. So today, what I would like to talk to you about is a patient that I had whilst I was still working in intensive care. Uh, this patient was a 61-year-old 60, uh, female from Middle East. And she, I'll sh just briefly show you the past medical history of this patient, just for you to see how complex this patient was even before the surgery. So in a nutshell, she had high BMI, diabetes, and she had previous, um, few surgeries previously, total hysterectomy, right breast cancer, and she underwent a right side mastectomy. Then later on she developed autoimmune hepatitis and the pancreatic tumor was diagnosed last year, uh, two years ago, sorry. And that's when she was referred to us for a Whipple's procedure. As you can see, even from just from the past medical history, the only positive thing is that she didn't have any allergies. Uh, apart from that, she was already a, you can say a complex case even before the surgery. So. What we did with this patient was she was admitted to hospital two weeks prior to the surgery. So she was seen by our multidisciplinary team to try to uh, prepare the patient for the surgery and try to talk to the patient as well about the possible complications that she will have after the surgery. She was in ICU for over two months and during this stay she had several com complications. She had to go to, back to theater a few times. Re it related to wound management. She had to have several debridements of the wound, which I'll talk to you uh, later. She had gastrointestinal uh, issues, so after the Whipple's procedure, she had an ileostomy. There was a lot of issues with the ileostomy, so she had to have enteral feeding, parenteral feeding, and she became septic. So only these three uh, complications were already a big burden for the patient to care but one of the biggest issue was the wound. As I said, she had diabetes, and when a patient is critically ill, it's really difficult to control diabetes, so this was one of the other issues we had, and the skin. So with all of these multiple complications after the surgery, maintaining uh, in the, in skin integrity was uh, difficult because the patient was immobile for long periods of time, it was difficult because of the pain and all the drains and all the other things that she had um, to prevent skin damage. As I said, the wound covered most of the inferior area of the abdomen, so it was a big, big wound. And after the surgery, we had to come up with a plan. So for the wound management, we needed to use a big wound management bag. We had to throughout the day, every day, several times we have to clean the wound with an antimicrobial solution. The wound bag management system was also used to protect the peri-wound skin. So this was a patient that really needed a complex um, wound care. After three months, she was with us over two months in ICU and then she went, was transferred to the ward. The management changed a little bit. The wound was prog progressively getting better, getting smaller, but we still had to worry with infection and exudate management. So we just changed a little bit our approach, but still we had to support the nurses on the ward because it, all of the comorbidities, the patient was still a complex, a complex patient. And then finally, when the patient was discharged, the wound was almost healed, which was, for a lot of us, was seen almost as a miracle because the patient went through so many episodes when she almost uh, lost her life. So it was really good when we were able to just transfer her to a rehabilitation center and just hand it over our ongoing care plan. So the main thing that I wanted to bring to you today was to show you how the intensive care team liaised with the tissue viability team and as well with all the other teams that were involved to show how much effort we had to put on to 
deal with this patient complex wound. So as I said, the patient had to go through several surgeries, so general surgery was involved because of the previous Whipple's procedure. Plastics team was involved with the general um, surgery team to treat for the wound, wound management and ileostomy management as well. The colorectal team and stoma nurse were involved daily for the care of the ileostomy as well as the wound, wound care and they worked really closely with the dietitian and nutrition specialist nurse. So this patient was reviewed daily when she, while she was still in ITU. Um, the plan had to be changed almost daily as well because of the challenges um, of the, her si critically uh, ill situation. And the nutrition specialist nurse was uh, reviewing the patient daily because of the enteral feeding, parenteral feeding, giving some guidance to the nurses. Endocrinology, they were involved throughout the whole patient journey because of her diabetes and the difficulty to control the diabetes in this situation. Physiotherapy, they were also involved since day one because of the high BMI and then with all the septic episodes, she was bad bound for long periods of time. And also they helped a lot with her emotional and psychological support because after all of this that I told you, you can imagine how she was feeling. And the physiotherapy showing her that she could do a bit more every day was really helpful for her mental status as well. The pain team was involved throughout the whole process. Uh, so they will have to liaise with the physiotherapy so that we can give the appropriate analgesia before physiotherapy. We also liaised really closely with the complementary therapy. So this was, uh, the patient's favorite therapy was aromatherapy and foot massage. She was, sometimes she was saying, I'm just trying to improve, but I love to be here with you just because of this therapy. So it was something that you can see really helped with her mood and her psychological um, situation. And then the counselor, this was someone else that was really highly involved with all the other team members. We used to have uh, debriefings um, regularly and the counselor was offered uh, just after the first surgery because we knew that she was going to have some complications and they f he followed her until she w was discharged. So the main thing that I wanted to talk to you about today is a tissue viability nurse role in intensive care. Of course, we're not important just in intensive care, but because it's my background, I wanted to share um, my experience in intensive care as a tissue viability nurse. I think we have a paramount role on liaising with all the other teams and because we, we don't work just in one department, we go around the hospital often, it's easy for us to know with whom we need to talk about. And as well, because we spend so much time with the patients, it's easy to have a good relationship with the family. And they were the, the other members of the team I didn't mention them in the circle, but they were really, really important to keep the, the patient motivated to improve. And uh, they still uh, talk to us from time to time. And she's doing really well. She's, she was back to her country. Um, and this is what I wanted to share with you today. Thank you.